Okay. So we were talking just a few minutes ago before everybody followed in. Had a chance to be in your neck of the woods last spring, right around this time. Yeah. Uh, now, Yuba City is basically a suburb of Sacramento? Kind of, yeah. It's Sacramento Valley. Uh, okay. Yeah, about 45 minutes from the capital. All right. So let's say you and I, we go back to your hometown. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? What's the one thing you got to show me to do so in the, Yuba City? The smallest mountain range in the world uh, is about 20 minutes from where I grew up. It doesn't sound very exciting. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the must thing, the must do? Oh, well, yeah, because then you get to say you went to the smallest mountain range in the world. Oh, you know, I never thought of that. I don't know how we missed that the last time through. <laughs> There's also roosters and chickens that hang out on the highway, which is a strange thing, but you got to see it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so now you're north of Sacramento. Folsom is like east of Sacramento, but do you... Like the kids in your area go down to the prison to see the prison and to see, you know, Johnny Cash, especially with the, the country background you have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we always tried to, you know, we always, it's haunted, right? So yeah. we, you know, you drive past it. As soon as we were 16, I grew up probably about 80 minutes from Folsom. Prison. Okay. And so we would drive out there and just kind of circle it and like plan our, our grand break in that we never tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have armed guards, mostly to keep people in, not out. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, if you say so. They're never prepared for somebody to break in as much as break out. Exactly. Well, once you're in, you're not getting out, though. Yeah. You didn't think that far ahead. Oh, you're right. <laughs> All right, I saw somewhere you're uh, very big into social media, and I saw on Twitter not too far ago. Actually, my wife uh, pointed this out. Favorite pizza, pineapple and jalapeno. I know. Where did Weird. that come from? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm stressed even Sweet thinking about eat. it. I know people give me so much heat for this. Yeah, actual heat, sweet, and yeah. for this. People give me so much slack for yeah, pineapple and jalapeno. I don't know. You know, add buffalo chicken. Uh huh. Man, I'm it's telling like you, double the heat. Double the heat. Not as sweet unless you want extra. Yeah, I don't know. It's See, I, I can't. <laughs> I, I I can't do the. I forgot. There's no back. First <laughs> time ever, we almost lost an artist on stage. Thank you. <laughs> Just trying to make an impression, y'all. <laughs> well, you did on that one. <laughs> so, what do you do to get away from music besides falling off of uh, stools? I'm a big movie buff. Okay. Big theme park buff. I mean, I had 40 hours off from this radio tour two weeks ago, so I went to Universal Studios in LA, Harry Potter Land. I mean, it's like a mental escape. <laughs> and there's butter beer. I had all the butter beer. Bangers and mash and big donuts. Yeah. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. You, you don't get sick. What is there a ride you won't ride? I don't really like things that spin in circles. So bangers and mash and getting on something that spins is not the way to go. Anything and getting on something that spins. <laughs> way to go. I used to be obsessed with the spinning rides when I was a kid. Uh-huh. Like, you know, they uh, at least in California, they called it the Gravitron, which uh, at county fairs is the thing that looks like a spaceship. It spins and you suck to the wall. Uh-huh. So that was my favorite. And then when I was like 10, I was like, well, let's test this thing out. And I wrote it eight times and then I threw up and I've never been able to do a spinning ride ever since. <laughs> it's true. I can see that. I can yeah. definitely see that. All right. So when you go into New City, you said you've been on this tour and you finally got 40 hours off from this tour. But when you go into some of these cities, some of them you've never been to before and some of them you may have been. Yeah. Uh, now, Pittsburgh, you've never been to Pittsburgh before. Never been here. Okay. So do you do something the first time or anytime you go into a city, like what's a must thing to do? Um. It's hard when I'm doing this because uh-huh. our schedule's so crazy, but I do like to travel as well for fun. My first thing, which is kind of dorky, <laughs> I like to, I'm a history buff. So okay. I love to, there's always free walking tours in big cities. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm going with friends on vacation somewhere, we always look up this free walking tour. We'll walk around for like two hours, learn about the history of wherever we're at. But then also, it always ends with them telling you the best bars to go to, the best pub crawls and that kind of stuff. And so that was our inside scoop. And then also we didn't feel bad about just drinking the whole time as long as we did something like that. <laughs> well, and you probably know more than the people that live in the city. Yeah, totally. So, all right. <laughs> now, I saw something online. This What's Flat Tyler and what's that all about? All right. So, in Nor- <laughs> awesome. I love that you asked this question. So, <laughs> I grew up very close to the Bay Area, Northern California. Bay Area is very known for hip-hop. Mm-hmm. And so, when we grew up, the stank face was a really big thing. Oh, yeah. Like the... Mm-hmm. Well, if, uh, apparently, when I'm really that one more time in, into the camera, there you go, perfect. Apparently, when I'm really feeling the music, as long as you look disgusted, that means you're actually really happy. Okay. And people, <laughs> my Snapchat and all that stuff, I was always just like, and then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, iPhone created this new or Apple created this new emoji that looks like an extra sad face. Okay. And everybody was like, wow that looks like Tyler's face on Snapchat. <laughs> and so 
all of a sudden meet and greets and concerts and stuff, these fans start showing up with these little laminates with that emoji. Don't get me wrong, not always little. Sometimes they're big on sticks and would bring them to meet and greets or they would just be in the crowd. Flat <laughs> Tyler's, they have like Flat Tyler goes to Grand Canyon. They got all these little things. Nice. And so we put it on our drum head because we play in California. Everybody knows what that is, like at least for my fans out there. So like, oh, that's cool. It's on his drum head. Or they're on my guitar picks as well. Nice. And But then we start playing shows everywhere else. And everybody's like, dude, why is your drummer so sad? <laughs> <laughs> so you almost feel like you have to tell that story yeah, before going absolutely. into it. And that leads me into this. I heard you have a really good Garth Brooks story. I do. I do. Do you want to hear it right now? Well, I didn't ask for the heck of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Wookie. Uh, you're going to be bragging. I know, I know. You don't want to brag, but go ahead and brag. Uh, it was crazy. I had lived in Nashville for literally five weeks. And my Snapchat, I guess I was doing the Flat Tyler stank face a little too much or something. But Country Sip, this website was like, well, we love your personality. We think you're funny. Do you want to take over our Snapchat and go three hours to Knoxville and go to a Garth Brooks show? Hijack our account. And so I was like, well, yeah, obviously. So we drove three hours and they said, hey, got a surprise. Not only are you going to get to go to this show with us, you get to interview Garth. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and so we're in this media room and just like this, but you know, time's a billion. And he's up here doing this interview. And she goes, hey, so you get two minutes with everybody else from the news. And I was like, great. And I went up there and I was like, everybody's asking the same questions. They're like, hey, Garth, what's it like touring with your wife? What's it like? Well, you know, what are the kids doing? What's next? You guys are going on tour again? And I got up there and was like, hey, I just did a writer's round with Tony Arata, which is one of his best friends that wrote The Dance. And I was like, I just moved from California to Nashville. And in a minute and 20 seconds left, what advice can you give me about all the no's I'm going to get for the next, you know, few years? <laughs> and because The Dance, everybody said, told Tony, that's not a hit. And yep. everybody told Garth, you're not getting a record deal. And three years later, he called up Tony. He's like, I just got a record deal. I want to cut the dance. And that's one of the biggest songs in country history. And so I was like, in that three-year time, you obviously got a lot of no's. What kind of advice can you give me? And he's like, dude, what are you? Go sit down. Like I was in trouble. <laughs> he's like, go sit down. And I was like, sorry, Garth, what'd I do? And he's, he uh, went and got me afterwards. And he pulled me over to uh, the basketball court where the volunteers were warming up. And we hung out for like 45 minutes. And he just told me a bunch of advice, and it was crazy. I mean, I, I still don't have any words for it. It was nuts. And uh, he emailed me like a week later. He's like, dude, I checked out your music. I love what you're doing, dude. And gave me some more advice. And then he's like, hey, can I get your phone number? Like, text you, like, just in case I ever need to get a hold of you really quick. I'm all, yeah. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> throw my phone at you as fast as I can. <laughs> Super nice guy, obviously. What's the best piece of advice? What's the one thing you've, you've, that he's told you? You're like, wow, man, he was right on the money with that. Easy answer. He said, Tyler, as a songwriter, write the best songs you could ever possibly write. But always record the best songs you ever hear. Wow. So ne not necessarily your song. Yeah. He said, he's like, look, if I would have been, you know, a stubborn songwriter, as we all are, mm -hmm. he's like, I would have never had the dance. I would have never had friends in low places. I would have never had any of these songs. And so just write the best songs you can, record the best songs you hear. Wow. And uh, I took it with me. It took me a while. It's a hard, you know, it's a hard bite, but it's true. You might want to keep that under your hat from now on because then everybody's going to be fighting you for those. I know. It's under there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Rich. <laughs>